with. And Ruben is uh, currently active in, in, a, in, a business, in a business here in the Rio Grande Valley. So I'm gonna please join me in welcoming Ruben Lowy. Thank you, Joseph. Actually, I have a couple of businesses here in the Valley. I started off three years ago as a rep for High Sierra Group. We provide services, training, and chemicals for the produce warehouses in the Rio Grande Valley. And at first, the hardest part was finding them. They don't really advertise. There's some warehouses in uh, Edinburgh. If I didn't know where I was going, I would have had, needed a helicopter to find them. They're off in the Orange Grove, these big warehouses. You never know where they're unless, you're, you, unless you knew where they were. And it took a long time uh, to get some business from some of these people. And they were not very trusting. But a lot of them liked some of the things I like. You know, they, a lot of them were, you know, a lot of, they're mostly men. A lot of them are ex-military, so there was some rapport there. That one time in their life, they were into sports. You know, the Latin community likes boxing, so that was another area of rapport. And they have a very uh, interesting, inappropriate, off-color sense of humor. Fits our word of the day, the, uh, the what is it? Bon Mott is definitely fits that uh, category. And I wouldn't, I, I would just smile and shake my head. I wouldn't get critical of them. I wouldn't act offended. And, and they're, the report, they're, they go, oh, okay. You know, he's not judging me. And then they would buy a case of chemical and they would try it. Our chemicals are really good. And, and, it, and the next thing you know, they're my clients. So now I have about 50 clients here in the Valley there's 500 warehouses. I've only found 100 of them. Um, and then with the uh, financial literacy business, I was, I was having a hard time uh, down here. And right before the pandemic, we were in training. And uh, there was one Hispanic man at the, at the office. And he was getting the orientation. And the guy that was doing the orientation, he was a black guy right from Nigeria. And then I was in the training room and I was the only white guy in the building and everybody else was Asian women. And I'm like, where are all the Mexicans? And so I uh, have a friend of mine who's uh, another Navy SEAL who's gonna move from California to Austin and he somehow thought that we were close. He, went up, he called me up and, and uh, he told me that he's an anthropologist. So I told him, I'm like, really? So I told him what I just told you. And he goes, oh yeah, Asians and Mexicans, that's like oil and water, right? He says, they're, they're, they're both highly patriarchal. The, uh, the Mexicans know how to be you know, focused when they need to be focused, and, uh, but they need to know how to be congenial and, and uh, friendly when, they, when it calls for that. And uh, then I talked to Luisa and she informed me, uh, taught me a word called, uh, El Porto Cero, which means a beggar, like the street vendors, but they use it different. So if you if you uh, suck up to the boss or brown nose and they catch you, they don't ever trust you again. I'm like, oh, that's very interesting. So I've been trying to navigate within these two demographics um, since I've been in business down here in the valley. So that's what I found is that if you just give people respect and you treat them like you want to be treated, uh, you can pretty much get along with anybody. Uh, Joseph. Thank you, Ruben, for that uh, opening, your opening remarks there and your insight on your experience on business and culture here in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, next up, I'm going to call up on Luisa, who is actually uh, been born and lived a lot of her life here in the Rio Grande Valley. And she's experienced, and she's a, obviously a Texas native. So I'm gonna ask for her insight on what Ruben was talking about and any, any other comments in this regard. So please join me in, in welcoming Luisa Montalvo. Hello, I apologize for not being prepared. I did not know I was going to be giving any kind of speech or lecture today so with in regards to what Ruben has said this is something that is actually hitting very close to home right now 
And the reason it is, is because I am a volunteer. Hails from New York, Long Island. I have noticed and have witnessed how when you are from a different area, state, country, region, the form of communication drastically changes. And a lot of it has to do with where you were raised, how people communicate with each other. Right now, what I'm having not so much a situation or a problem with is that the person, the people from New York that I'm dealing with have a certain style of communication. And when someone, if, if I were to talk to you and say, you'd be like, what? I don't understand what you're saying. Well, you know, I'm, so what I've noticed is the styles, the forms of communication we have from region to region is different everywhere you go. Being able to adapt, being able to comprehend, being able to be willing to listen to how they are trying to communicate to you is actually an art. Once you've mastered that, then you're able to communicate with almost anyone. And the key is listening. Not so much communicating, communicating as it is listening. One thing I do is I ask myself, why is this person saying this? What is triggering their emotions, their thoughts, their way of communicating? Once you're able to do that and understand it and almost break it down, then your form of, your, let me give you an example. Yesterday, we went to go and spay, I'm sorry, we went to go and register health certificates for 40 dogs. Most people walk in with one dog, maybe three dogs. We had 40 dogs. To me, if you're going to come and I'm at the window of McDonald's and you want to order 40 burgers, I'm going to get mad at you. I have no reason to be mad at you because, of course, the more business you get, you should be happy about it. But when somebody tells me I'm going to have to work really hard or harder than what I'm used to for my wage, for my pay, I get upset. You would think, hey, I'm getting paid. I need to work. 40 burgers. Let me have 40 burgers. When we walked in with 40 dogs, they were very upset. And that's because I phoned ahead and I said, we are coming with a lot of dogs. I said 25. I didn't know that it was actually 40. So we said, is someone able to come out to the vehicle and check the dogs and administer the rabies shot? And then we can be on our way. No, you need to get every dog down. You need to write all their information, their name, their age, their weight. Then my friend from New York interjects, wait, I need to know their age and their weight. I don't have a scale. I don't know their age. I'm not a vet. I don't know how to check their teeth. You see, now we have a confrontation. I told my friend from New York to please get back into the van and be quiet. And I went back to talk to the lady. I said, look, I know you're stressed. I know it's a lot of dogs. I'm so sorry, we're kind of under a crunch and we need to get these dogs taken care of. What is the best way I can help you to make, move this process along? She said, well, if you can bring in maybe two or three dogs from the same litter, then we can go ahead and certify the rest of them. Perfect, we had about six litters. We didn't have to get all the different dogs down. It was a win-win situation. But what I realized is that as soon as somebody's upset, and if you make the other person upset, all you're doing is escalating the communication and, and the conversation, and that doesn't work. So listening is such an important factor, especially if you're speaking to someone from a different area, region, state, or country. Thank you so much. Thank you, Luisa, for those insightful comments. And finally, we're gonna call on Pastor Clark,
And of course, he's got experience coming from Puerto Rico and New York and now here in Texas. So please join me in welcoming uh, Pastor Clark Ortiz. Yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure. So speaking on, on the difference between communications in different regions, Uh, here in the Americas, have yet to go to Spain, but notice that there there are different uh, different cadences between how the language is spoken, even in in Spanish. And I'll never forget when I had a business meeting it with some associates from Chile uh, here in the Rio Grande Valley, and we went to eat uh, some lunch, and they put a a, a pile of uh, a large stack of tortillas in front of us. And they had never left Chile. They had been in the surrounding communities, uh, other countries, you know, Uruguay and Argentina, but had never been to Puerto Rico. I'm into uh, South Texas before. So when they, when they saw the tortillas and they picked up the tortilla, they picked it up almost as, uh, you know, of amazement. What is this flat, round, paper-like substance? And I said, well, it's a tortilla. And they had no idea. They said, well, it's not. I'm totally different. And so we had to say, well, this is the bread of the region. And when we said bread, she could not realize that this was this little thin substance was actually a, a bread substance. It was something totally different. And I And I've learned in all the different communities, even here in the United States, you go to no, you go north and you may order some fajitas and end up with a breakfast steak. So there's different types of words that are used, not just with food, but also in business. Now, when you go to different places here in the Rio Grande Valley, uh, it's a bit different. We're, we're very uh, family oriented, community based. It's, it's, it's common that if you have a business meeting, you're going to end up at someone's home. You're going to have uh, maybe dessert, coffee or drink, a beverage. Uh, at the end of the evening at the, at the house is very welcoming. You go somewhere else and it's very, it's unusual. So it's important when you travel uh, that you understand what is the, uh, the vernacular of the area. So uh, to that point, uh, what I've found when I go to an area is I immediately go to a local, either a local diner, a local coffee house, uh, go to a bookstore, and begin to communicate with the locals to understand how they communicate so I can somehow engage uh, with them, whether it be in business or in communication, find out what are their, what are their hot buttons and find out what is the, what is the, the topic of the region. And it helps me to, to, to relate to them. So they won't see me as an outsider, which tends to be the case when you do quite a bit of traveling. If you are an outsider, uh, sometimes it takes a little while for them to warm up to you. So if you can understand what those, uh, what those uh, terms and those words and you know, how they communicate, the vernacular of the community, you can actually get ahead faster in that community. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Clark, for those comments. And uh, now I'll just turn it back to uh, Ruben uh, Lowing as if he has the, any uh, further uh, comments on what everybody has spoken here. Thank you, Joseph. When I, when I came here, this wasn't too much of a difference from Panama, as far as the language, you know, there's enough people that spoke English that can function, and the uh, the mentality, you know, they they like boxing. Uh, you know, when I was in, I did that most of my life. I was the only white boxer in every gym I've ever been in, in uh, Pensacola and in uh, Virginia Beach. You know, everybody was black and. You know, they called me a cracker for three months before I knew what they were even talking about. <laughs> the, uh, the, the difference that I noticed with, with them is they, they try to emulate Muhammad Ali and be clowning and run their mouth or be like Mike Tyson, try to be all intimidating. And my solution was always the same, just get them up in the ring. You know, I'm like, oh, you're kind of funny. Let's see how funny you are up here. Or, oh, why don't we get up in the ring and work this out? And then I went to California and I was the only gringo and everybody else was Mexican and they come in the gym smiling, hugging on you, shaking your hand like they love you. When you get in the ring, they try to take your head off. And what I would to how I took that from the, the warehouses especially is they are the way they have to be depending on what the situation is. If they're, you know, they need to be focused and locked down, they're good at that. 
but they need to be congenial and uh, and pleasant, then they can be that way. And usually they're either primarily one way and they can be the other way. You know, they can be a hard charger and, and driven, but they can be cordial if they want to be, or they're very jovial and happy-go-lucky person, but they can lock it down when they need to. And that was, that's, that helps me when I'm dealing with, with that market. When it comes to the financial services, it, it really has a lot to do with uh, acceptance. And then I've learned so much from Louisa, and I love how she uh, brought it around. But it's basically, it's not so much having to figure out how somebody operates, but it's really more of just respecting people and their culture and the way that they are. And I don't have a problem with that. Because when you have a problem with that, there becomes a problem. So that's uh, my closing. Joseph, back to you. Thank you. And I'd like to uh, give thanks to everybody that uh, participated in this panel. And it was a very enlightening discussion. And with that, I'll turn it back over to our Toastmaster, Harold Berry.